Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment of our market update for first time home buyers here in Southern California. My name is Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate, and we are on a mission to help California's renters become homeowners. And no, this is not a hyperbolic uh, title designed to get clicks. Uh, you know, really, for the last couple of months, I think we've been talking about a brewing storm coming with inventory. And I think the hope was always, well, let's see what happens in the first few weeks of 2022 and see, do we see those inventory numbers bouncing back up? And unfortunately, we're, we're not seeing that. And we're going to go through the data and I'm going to tell you what I think is going on. And there is a little piece of hope. So we're going to get, we're going to talk about that towards the end of the video. So what I'd like to do is just jump right into the statistics um, and, and kind of take you through my logic and my reasoning and what I think is really going on with this. Because, um, you know, what we're seeing is really nothing short of extraordinary. So, all righty here, we are going to, uh, you know what, let me go in and do this in our normal slideshow view. I think it looks a little bit better. There we go. All right. So the first thing is taking a look at our prices. Just as a reminder, these are four to six weeks old. Um, I've been saying that a lot because I worry about how useful this exact moment data is. But look at this trend line for entry level single family homes, right? Um, hold on here. It seems like I've got it set into um, slide mode where it does not want to actually stop turning here. So let me go ahead and redo that real quick and I will jump right back into there. Having a little bit of technical difficulties here but I think we can get this, um, I think we can actually make this work here. Let's see, uh, give me just a second here. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we can make that work real fast. Okay, so let me go in here and get that set for us. We'll go back to sharing that screen. Okay. There we go, now we're back. All right, so we're looking at these closed prices, right? And, and I think what you're seeing is for the most part, for most of the last year, these prices have been relatively stable for this entry level, kind of maybe tipping up a little bit towards the end. Uh, things have been a little bit more of an upward path here for condos, uh, but we're even seeing some price growth over here. And just as a reminder, I don't think we've, we've talked about this recently, but this is based on what's called first quartile pricing, which is the median of the median. So we're trying to look at that point that's a quarter way up the ladder of, of the range of prices for these three bedroom, two bath single family homes and these two bedroom, two bath condos. And we're seeing that number is up here at 740,000. It is not the highest we've seen, uh, but it's the highest we've seen recently. And we're about 518,000 for our entry level two bedroom, two bath condo. But here's something else that we're seeing. And we're going to look at this total monthly payment, right? And, you know, just as a reminder, we really wanted to make this a realistic number for first time home buyers. So it's based on 5% down. It includes mortgage insurance, property taxes, even an HOA fee for our condo. But look at where we are, um, you know, approaching really $4,200, $4,300 here for entry level single family home. Um, that is the highest point we've seen. And we have had some points that were around mid 4100s before. And then 3361 for our condo. Now, what's really driving this is rising interest rates. And, you know, the, the question that we have, right, is will our market and our demand absorb these higher prices or will this put the brakes on things? And while I think it's still a little too early to know for sure, we're seeing some signs that, you know, buyers are not retreating from the marketplace. So if you look at our minimum household income, we are now almost towards $110,000 for that entry level single family home. Uh, this is the minimal amount of income with no other debts needed to qualify. And we are at just over $82,000 for our entry level condo. Now let's talk about housing availability. Um, this is our 14 day absorption rate. In, one of the ways in which this statistic can be a little bit flawed sometimes, and I mentioned this a couple of times before, is when we have a situation of very, very low inventory, you kind of have this like um, seesawing effect. Even with a 14 day look back, 
we have this kind of seesawing effect where there's no inventory. So sales are low, then houses come on the market, right? That absorption rate drops lower, right? Because it takes a week for those houses to go under escrow. So it's, um, you know, kind of this sort of like caterpillar like motion, the front moves, then the back follows and the front moves, then the back follows. And I think that's what we're seeing a little bit of here. So our condo absorption rate moved up to 88%. That is a very strong number. But our uh, entry level single family home is down here at 70%, which is still a, um, a brisk market, but it's definitely not the kind of seller's market that we've seen. But I think these stats are a little bit misleading and I'm gonna tell you why. Here's our total inventory chart. And this is the thing that really is kind of giving me, um, you know, this is really what's giving me a little bit of pause here is that for our entry level single family home, I know this might be a little small, but we are under, um, you know, we are basically around probably 950 units here. Where were we last year at this point in time? At this point in time last year, um, we were actually close to 1,200 units. So we are off by about 25%. And I was hoping that this disparity that we've seen versus last year would start to change, right? That we, we get this influx of new listings and it would solve kind of our inventory problems, but it's not. We're not really gaining any ground. And as you can see here, we've, we've kind of stalled out a little bit. It's flattened out. We're seeing the same thing in condos. Well, the situation is even worse, right? Our condo market here is about 700 or so units. Where were we at this point last year? We were close to double that at 1,400 units active and available on the market. A 50% drop in inventory is going to have an effect on the market dynamics and the prices. This is just a given, um, and I don't really see any way around it. Even rising interest rates are not enough to sort of offset that level and that reduction in inventory. And this is our secondary competition statistic, right? This is our 14 day still active. So what this tends to do is it looks at all the homes that came on the market in the last 14 days. It says how many are still available. Well, look at here on our entry level single family home. This number is so low, it's almost off our chart. That means these homes are getting snapped up. They, these new listings are getting snapped up very, very quickly. And if you look even our condo number, which is a bit better, uh, is still trending really towards the low points that we saw in the worst of competition in the spring of last year. I don't think this bodes well you know, for future buyers. Um, you know, I, I think if you're a buyer on the sidelines saying, I'm just waiting for that day, it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better. Um, you know, Eventually you will be right. I think the problem is you might be right years from now where you've missed out on equity and you, you participated in rent increases. I, I don't know whether it's worth the wait for you. And then finally, let's talk about our weak supply of homes. This really references uh, our run rate of homes going under contract um, versus uh, you know, the homes that are coming, uh, the inventory that we have. So it's saying if no new homes came on the market, how many weeks would it take for us to completely deplete our available and active listings? You know, and if you go in here, we are below three weeks of inventory on entry level single family homes, and we are in the low three weeks on condos. This is a low point for condos. We have never seen a number this low, and we are trending towards our low points um, for single family homes, and we are below where we were last year. Look at condos. Where were we last year? Almost six weeks of inventory. Where are we today? Just over three weeks. So uh, again, that's almost half as much. We're seeing that the buyers are still there. Now, I said that there might be a little bit of hope. And one of the things that I think a lot of people will not tell you when they're running these market statistics is they won't tell you the ways that they might be wrong, right? And the areas where they might be, where they might be missing something. And I think it's important to kind of examine sort of that minority opinion. And, and this is not what I think is going on, but I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. One of the things that trends that I've seen in a market like ours, especially for first time home buyers, is that when those rates bump up a little bit, oftentimes what we see happen when those rates bump is almost this like panic buying, right? 
that just deteriorates the inventory further. Um, the thing is that usually only lasts a week or two. So the real question that remains to be seen is, is that what we're seeing right now? Panic buying, panic demand, and that's going to subside. And if that does, what are we going to be left with? Honestly, I think even if that is the case, we're still going to be left with a very competitive market because that available level of homes is so low. We are so undersupplied versus where we need to be that I, you know, I think this market can actually absorb quite a bit before you're going to see anything that starts looking like prices. The other price reductions. The other thing too that we're seeing is, you know, inflation. Is, is there, you know, our latest in inflation statistics are 7% year over year. When you have this high inflation, wages tend to follow. And what that does is that gives you a lot more room for those payments to rise for houses, right? Because they're not real increases. You know, if, if the price of housing goes up 10%, if the payments get 10% higher, but you got a 10% raise, your situation hasn't really deteriorated in any appreciable way. Um, so I, I still think we need a couple weeks to figure some of these other things out to know for sure. But regardless, we are in an inventory crisis. It's not hyperbole. It is here. Uh, and it doesn't show any signs of really getting better. Anyhow, uh, that's all I've got for you this week. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. If someone you know or you are looking to purchase your first home, we would absolutely love to work with you. See the description down below. You can book a 15 minute consultation with us, no cost or obligation. Do not forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we will see you again next week.